All right, now we have figured out all the basics. Now we can really go into it. In order to work on our own design projects in a meaningful way, I would suggest to start with a design assignment, which I would suggest to go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to give you a design brief that you can use to work with a mid-journey. It will help you to make decisions faster, to have some restraints and restrictions that are more realistic and that make the whole project more viable. So I tried this before. Let's see what it does to me now. So I asked ChatGPT if it could provide me with a client design brief for a product designer who is supposed to design a chair. I would like ChatGPT to include the user group, context of use for the chair, and whatever else it finds relevant for such a design brief. So let's see what we get. Yeah, that seems to be like a quite elaborate but interesting design brief. We have an overview. They seek a talented product designer, so that may be you, to create a new and innovative chair design. So now I will go through the design brief and try to highlight specific words that we can use for our design, first of all in the description of our prompts, but also in the decision making. Do we fulfill all the functions that we are supposed to fulfill? Do we have to focus on certain user groups? What is the area of use? All these things are relevant for us in the design process. The chair would be used in a modern urban co-working space. So that's that's cool, right? For co-working, you might have different chairs than you would have for the living room, for the kitchen, or just the regular office. Target users are groups consisting of professionals, entrepreneurs, and freelancers. Long hours on laptops and in meetings. So comfort is important, ergonomics, but also contemporary design. Different body types should be accommodated. Right, so this is crucial here. This user group and context that helps us a lot and can really guide the direction that we want this to go in. The objectives, also nice to list them in this way. Uh, I think they seem to be more or less the same as already stated, it's comfort, aesthetics, visually appealing, blending with modern and stylish interior design, durability, high quality materials, sustainability and ease of maintenance, it should not take up excessive floor space, all right, constraints, the budget, cost effective, okay, so this is something that is part of a design brief, but obviously that's not necessarily something we can already um, consider in our work with Midjourney, that really depends on the suppliers that you're choosing, the manufacturing processes that you pick, and all this kind of information. You can obviously try to um, consider it, but I wouldn't um, go as far as being like one on one on all the details. This should still be a fun project. Um, so take what you think helps and adds to the project, but also. Don't restrain yourself too much. Deliverables, okay, we don't need to deliver anything specifically, just what we want to deliver because our own project. But I think it could be cool if we have some proper concepts and at one point you would be able to put things into 3D and make renderings of it. All right, back in mid journey, I would um, take a look at our settings again, just to be sure where we are. I would activate the raw mode and leave the rest as we set it up the last time with the difference that um, I choose for high stylization. And then before I go wild and use all the, the words that we just um, have ChatGPT write for us, I would start with the product by itself. Just to get a feeling for what does Midjourney understand when it reads the word chair, and what what are we what can we expect? And we can also use this to get a baseline of the style. Is our style too high? Is it too low? Is it going too crazy? Or are we within the realm that we are expecting to be? And if you press the up arrow key in the text field, if you're lucky, the previous command will just reappear and you can quickly add a different word without having to type everything again, but somehow it doesn't work always. So what I'm trying to do now is just really use very few words 
to get a sense of the concepts that Midjourney associates with the words that I'm using. Right, so chair, so here we have this really archetypical chairs, but also already something floaty in the back. Chair design immediately adds a lot of curvature, a little bit of rust love growth that I'm getting here, a lot of color, much more color than it had before. And if you do concept chair design, we go even further than this. So I have to say for what, what our design assignment is, I have the feeling it's going too far, which is why I'm going back to the settings. You can also use the chance and test other versions, but especially with the short prompts, I find the latest to work the best. Okay, I, I'm not too happy with what we have, but I will... Um, Go back to the default of medium style and try to add more context to the words chair design and then if you think about our design assignment it was all about comfort so i put comfortable chair maybe we will remove the design to keep it more realistic and I will now basically just go through the list of the design objectives that we had, right? So the first one was comfort, the next one was aesthetic. And it was referring to modern and stylish interior. So we do modern chair. Imagine modern working chair. And then I will do durable. That was the next word. Versatile and space efficient and the last one in our design objectives was user centric so what you also saw is the the cute jobs so you can only run three jobs at a time in the basic plan and all the other jobs will be added to the queue so after one job is finished the jobs from the queue will uh, just follow up up and so this was the first one comfortable chair so we see this immediately we have this huge cushioning so what i'm trying to do is like i try to get an understanding of the impact different words have and how they are being interpreted by mid-journey modern it's apparently also similar to design so very curvy not necessarily what i would understand to be modern but um it gives me a good idea of what I can expect or what influences I might add by using the word like this. The working chair immediately gives us something that is more familiar to us from the offices maybe, but also a little bit old school. You have these really fat base wheels, also a lot of cushion, durable, versatile, it's much slimmer and thinner. Interesting, a lot of color. There's already duty on there. Space efficient. Wow, this is really modern. To my estimation. Almost like a gaming chair vibe. This looks interesting to me. So we see that we have already some understanding of what words work better for us than the others. And what style also we are going towards. And this was the user centric. So this was the first iteration of prompt building, I would say. I would try to use different combinations of these words that we used and try to arrange them and figure out how they work together. So what if we have a, what was this one? Space efficient. Efficient and I liked uh, the versatile, versatile working chair. All right, I think these are already really interesting. We have users in there. It looks very ergonomically shaped without being like crazy design chairs that are like, I don't know what, out of alien movies. 
they already provide context, which sometimes can be helpful, but also not necessarily is what we are looking for at this stage. Some really interesting details that we can fish. And what I also would like to say at this stage is that the idea is to quickly get an understanding of the shape and the direction that you want to go and start sketching next to it uh, with pen and paper, sketching down details, saving images that you think are interesting and building sort of a collection of images and work that you can get inspired by and that you can refer to always. And I think we should also try to use more of the style reference that it provided, modern styling. Obviously, that's not a very distinct style, but um, I think there's more to gain from using modern. We can also try to describe modern design with different words to see what that will give us. So contemporary, maybe. Here we are. Something interesting going on over here. Space efficient and versatile working chair gave the best results in my opinion. I'm really happy with that. So I will use this and maybe re-roll it because I really like it just to see what other ideas it will come up with that are pretty similar to what we have but different in terms of colors and maybe geometry. So I will go back now and upscale the ones that I think have something interesting. I think this chair has something. So I scale it up. I really like the bottom two chairs here. Scale them up. So the idea is not to find the perfect concept, right? To get the single idea that is the best idea, but rather to find a multitude of ideas that you can put together by yourself into a sketch and make something out of it that is the best combination, the best of all worlds. And so here we have our upscales and maybe you can use that moment to do some variation. For example, I'm not sure if I like this section specifically. So I would just ask it to do that and I put clean lines as a reference to the modern styling. Okay, here. Here we remove this. This is really cool because it also speaks to the shaping that we already have between the seating and the back pad. This alternative is actually quite an interesting development. Maybe here, for example, we could use the chance to add a armrest. And did it work? So we do have some armrests, even though they are tiny and look strange. <laughs> we managed to make them. You can also try to describe the user context. All right, modern co-working space. So it looks pretty much industrial. A lot of lamps hanging from the ceiling, apparently, in those co-working spaces. <laughs> So I'm interested how it will yeah, place the chair into that context. I think it's nice that it stays with a similar environment for all these prompts. So I think especially the way this chair is presented in this image or even this one, like not even looking at the chair, but just the overall presentation composition is really well done. It can also give you ideas and inspiration about how to present your chair at a later stage in what scenes to render, what lighting to use and what context to provide. So this is where I would go with the ideation in the first place. So now we gathered like, I don't know, maybe 10 different ideas. And now it's on you as a designer to take those ideas, work with them on paper, take a pen, put things together and play around with it. Define your shape that you think works well, try different things together. But if you have the feeling you are stuck or things are too similar to each other or too normal, not out of the box enough, then I will now go over some specific product design prompts that you can use if you want to get something 
that is more different or more sketchy, let's say. So we do industrial design, sketch, multiple angles, and then we add this prompt. What I like about the design sketches with multiple angles is that often they depict the same or a similar chair from different angles, which can also help your mind to grasp the shapes better. Another one I like to use is pencil sketch, concept art, product design, just as a classification, and 2D sketch. And all of them together often create something really cool. It looks a little bit old school, most of the shapes. Yeah, this one really gives us like a nice sketch of a single one. I think this are some cool sketches. So this might be a tool to break you out of the conventional thinking or just uh, to feel more conceptual rather than already finished. There are other ways. If you really want to go wild in a different direction, I often switch to the Niji mode. The Niji mode is actually made or is based on and trained with anime images and manga images. So much more the Japanese style and mostly human characters. But what I like about it is that it's so different from what we're used to as product designers that sometimes it can really break you free from those restrictions on your mind, limitations that you might have set up on yourself. And that's why I think it can be really funny sometimes to use it. And also if you have any style that you just really like to test, feel free. Uh, Midjourney knows most styles, Bauhaus. So here this is the Nietzsche version. <laughs> I think there's actually some cool aspects here. Uh, different colors, certainly. More playful. This looks like a Lego person somehow. <laughs> it definitely does um, strike you differently. Bauhaus chair, yeah. But by now you should have a good plethora of images and ideas that work for you. If not, add more words, try to find what you're looking for and see if that is resulting in better outcomes. But um, just make sure that you don't spend too much time on this. This should be a quick process with fast output and it's not the final output, right? So we're just in the ideation, now we generated some baseline images but we will continue using them in another iteration where we are really boiling down more conceptualized directions 